Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is TV here from Inca Babes. Happy holidays. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas if you celebrated and hopefully you didn't have to work. You had the time off to spend with family and friends. Now, we've got work to do with the new year just hanging around the corner in just a matter of a couple of days. We'll be entering 2024, God's Spare Life, and we need to get ourselves prepared the kids are off school there will be background noise just a quick disclaimer and also i'm not a financial i am not a professional financial advisor or anything of the sorts i work in the finance sector i like to share information that i apply to myself so to take the information that i share with you with a grain of salt now we would have previously had a video where we talked about the saving challenges that i want to focus on for 2024 now that I have all of my saving challenges picked out, and I know that video was so, 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 so long, I appreciate everyone that watched it. I actually thought no one was going to watch it. Side note, I really thought I was just going to get just a few views. And, um, you know, shout out to everyone that's watching it. If you find the content helpful, I do appreciate you. With that said, we also did a video where we're trying to avoid making mistakes in 2024. If you didn't watch that video, which is not as long as the last one, definitely check that out. Some of the mistakes that I mentioned was not having a budget. And so for us to have a budget, we need to know how much am I working with? How much disposable cash am I working with? So because we set up these two binders, one is my structured savings challenges, high priority. Um, these are dashboards that I made. I'm going to be setting up my January binder in a couple of days. But um, yeah, we need to know how much money I plan to save with these structured savings challenges. Then we had an unstructured binder or a low priority. These are the savings challenges I want to do. I want to have some fun with. And this is after I would have already taken care of the of the high priority. So these are the low priority saving challenges. And these are uncertain. I don't know how long they're going to take me. So we don't have a budget for these. And those saving challenges actually will go down here into my bonus savings. Again, that's just the icing on the cupcake. All right. So what we're going to focus on today is trying to figure out what budget do I have for these and if it's actually realistic. And I encourage you, if you've not yet decided what your saving challenges are, what your financial goals are, how much you want to save, just grab a pen and paper and write down some numbers because don't make the mistake of not having a budget, not setting up financial goals, um, not saving for you know retirement and different stuff. You should know exactly what you want to have this year, the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 20 years. You you should know. And if you don't know, take this opportunity as a reminder to figure it out. Now, let's go to our saving challenges. And again, just use this video as a reminder. If you've not yet done it, New Year's is literally next week, 2024. So just have yourself prepared. So what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to go through all of the saving challenges that I have in my structured binder and we're going to add, we're going to see figure out how much money we're going to have allocated for the entire year. We're going to add that up and then that's my financial goal for 2024. All right, so I'm just going to bring my calculator over here, right? And I hope I have enough slots here. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. And I think I have 12 challenges in here. But some of them is high priority and some of them is low priority savings challenges. That's why I don't need my savings challenges binder, high priority and low priority, because this binder is structured and it has high and low priority saving challenges. And then the other binder is not structured and it just have a bunch of saving challenges that are all my bonus saving challenges. So if you wanted to have a high priority saving challenge binder and a low priority saving challenge binder, you can also do that as well. I don't consider these low priority essentially they are just bonus i mean they kind of are low priority if you look at it that way anyway let's get writing and let's get budgeting so for the five euro savings challenge the aim the out the aim for this is to save five euros every week for 48 weeks so basically the budget for this would be five times 48 that gives us a total budget of 240 so i'm just gonna write here for my five euros uh the total amount that we plan to save for the entire year is going to be 240. All right, so we can put this away. And we don't have to, we don't have to calculate the 10 euro one because it's double that. So basically it's 48 weeks. We're going to take 10 times 48 and that gives us a total of 480 for this savings challenge. 
we have the 20 euro savings challenge as well 48 weeks once again we're going to take 48 and we're going to times that by 20. all right so that was 960 so we're just going to go ahead and write 960 on our sheet here and pardon my handwriting it's, it's not the best okay so next we have our affirmation challenges and with the affirmation challenges again these are these, these are my low priority low priority does not mean they are not important low priority means that after i have these specific ones taken care of then i focus on these ones i'm, I'm gonna say my affirmations every time i do my challenges anyway it doesn't matter it's just that if i don't have the funds if there's something important that's happening in my financial life and i don't have enough funds this is what i want to focus on first because this is this doesn't have a specific amount so i'm just gonna write the word affirm oh wait i mean i can actually fit, fit it in can't i yeah i can fit it in affirmations right so when i roll a die for this uh i'm most likely going to use a six-sided die because I'm only working with a limited amount that I can save per week. So if I roll a six sided die, the highest amount that I will roll is going to be six. And there are six boxes here. So that tells me on a monthly basis, the maximum amount that I would need to have allocated for this challenge would be 36. If we take 36 and we times 12 months, it gives us a total of 432, right? And again, the purpose of us writing these numbers down is to see, is this realistic? Is this a realistic challenge? And if it's not, then we need to make some adjustments. And you need to do that now before the year, before you even start. Don't start 2024 and there's a level of uncertainty. All right, so next we have our 500. And since this actually has a specific amount, I actually don't even need to take this out because the goal is to save 500. I'm actually going to save more than 500 on that. I think the numbers add up just a little bit over, but we're just going to write a 500 on there. And so these ones are pretty easy. So for the thousand, we plan to save 1000. That's why I have actual here, because you might actually save more and hopefully not less. Right. So for the 2024 challenge, with this challenge, I'm saving either 20 or I'm saving 24. So I'm going to inflate this and say on an average basis should i go higher or should i go lower you know what let's do lower because i might not be able to put 24 every week 20 might be the stronger number so we'll say 20. so if we're actually going to save a minimum of 20 this almost makes it the same as the 20 euro challenge doesn't it so we're saying well, that for this challenge we'll do we'll stick to a budget of 960 which means that we'll put 20 in each one of these in the 2024 but i know that i want to put 24 in some of them or 25 so it'll it'll be over target but always under target and overachieve your goals so 20 times the 48 weeks that's going to give us another 960 so we're just going to write 960 here but i'm going to push myself to actually exceed that that's a bit more realistic for me now for the 50 envelope challenge i believe i had the number written down somewhere why did i do that i completely forgot that i i think 1375 is, is how much you save on the 50 envelope challenge because i know the 100 envelope challenge is almost like 55,000 over 5,000 like 5,500 i think if i'm not mistaken i believe the total amount that you save on the 50 envelope challenge when you add up all of these numbers here is let's not forget i mean it's only going to take me two seconds so 50 Plus 49, plus 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
why did I thought it was thirteen seventy five? It was twelve seventy five. Well, I didn't miss anything. If I did, just let me know down in the comment section. But we're gonna write for the fifty a hundred envelope, fifty of a hundred. Uh, the total that we're expecting to save for this is going to be twelve seventy five. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I did that correctly? I hope I did. I felt like it was thirteen something. But you know what? I'm just gonna write thirteen here because I feel strongly like it should be more. So I'm just gonna write thirteen seventy five here, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so next we have, this is a themed savings challenge. Again, this is going to be on my low priority savings challenges. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to write themed over here. And I've, I think I've done a video like this before where I kind of go through all of the numbers with you. And similar to the affirmations, I'm rolling a die, a six-sided die for these ones as well, keeping it very low. And the maximum amount is going to be six. So we have to times six by the six envelopes. So six times six is 36. And we're going to times this because we're doing this monthly. I'm going to times this by 12 months, and that gives me 432. So that's for that one. There we go to our Zodiac Savings Challenge. And each one of these stars is just going to be 1 euro. So on, an, on a monthly basis, I'm aiming to save 40 euros for each of the Zodiac. I used to say 50, but I never... Last year, over the last couple... Not last year. What am I talking about? It's still 2023. When we did these challenges... I never got to save, I never got to color this in and save that extra 10. So I'm not, since that didn't work for me, I'm not going to put that on myself this year again. And that's the beauty of making adjustments to your budgeting and your saving challenges. If it actually didn't work over the last three months, eliminate it and remove it. Okay. So we're going to stick to 40, 40 per month. So 40 times 12 months, that gives us a total of 480. So I'm just going to write here Zodiac. And the total is, yeah, honey bun, just keep coming um, into the office. So what I was saying just now, oh yeah, so Zodiac, the total for this, for the annual budget for this is going to be 480. And this usually funds like my, um, my birthday sinking funds or, you know, one of those. All right, so now let's move on over to this one here. And these are my seasonal saving challenge. I have one every month and it's, you know, it's according to the to the season that's why you'll see like a, it's still the winter season now so this is gonna be the first one for january and we have one two three four five we have five five ten fifteen oh it's different different um well i actually don't know so on an average five ten fifteen we should have like 20 icons this one has more so i guess that's a bonus but on an average, there's 20 icons here. And I think we're just going to stick to being the budget for 20 per month. Okay, so it's 20 per month. And we have 12 months for the full year of seasons. So the total budget for this saving challenge on an annual basis is going to be 240. This one is a bonus. This builder farmer is a bonus one. Again, this is going to go down here with my bonus savings. Hopefully you can see that. This doesn't have a specific target amount. This is just how... It's just for excitement. It's just to break this monoton monotony here. These are very specific and straightforward. This one's just to add a little bit of fun to the saving challenge. That'll be a bonus. So that does not have an amount. We can't put an amount on that because we just don't know, which is the fun of it all. All right, so now that we have all of our, plug our numbers plugged in here, we can now go ahead and, oh, add everything up together and see, is this realistic? right because on a weekly basis i told you guys that i am going to be putting 160 towards my savings so that's 160 weekly so 160 weekly 160 times there's what 52 weeks but i'm only cash stuffing 48 weeks so i'm going to do 48 weeks so 160 48 weeks that gives me 7680 euros as my target amount okay that's the goal that's what we need to hit well that's what that's all that i have actually unless i get extra so let's add everything up and see does this is this realistic does it meet the 760 7680 so for the five we have 240 10 we have 480 20s we have 960 500 1000 
We have 960 for the 2024. 1375. I inflated this one. We have 432. We have 432. We have 480. And we also have 240. So in total, for all of these saving challenges, we are estimating to come to 7,099, which means there are going to be some weeks that I have extra cash. That means I'm going to have this is 76, 80. Let's take away that. That means I'm going to have an extra 581. And that's most likely either going to go to this saving challenge to the back here, build a farm, or it's actually going to go into this binder here. This is where we have a little bit of fun. So after we take care of these saving challenges, we have some couple of few dollars left over, and we just have a little bit of fun with this binder here. Now bear in mind, this does not include any extra cash that I may get. So say for instance, so this is the inflow that I'm expecting. Just write that down actually. I'm expecting an inflow of 7,680 for the year. Then there's also YouTube and there's also Etsy. So every now and then, if I make a little 20 euros, a little 50 euros off of Etsy, even if it's every other month, that's still an extra couple hundred, you know, for the year that we can add on to this amount. And I'm going to be stuffing that in here as well. Um, and then whenever I get anything from YouTube, I'm also going to be applying this as well. And if I get any bonuses from work, if I run into any extra cash, that's going to be my other inflow. And so all of that is going to add into this 7,680 and that's going to be going towards these binders. Now imagine that I did all these challenges and I didn't have this other binder that allowed me to play with the extra cash. What's going to happen is because I think I have extra cash, I might spend it. That's why I like having this binder here. It gives me a push to say, oh my gosh, I have extra cash. I can now play with all of these different challenges. And I know some people think it's just too much cutback, but if you have too much saving challenges, it also pushes you to try to complete them. It's almost like psychological, really. If you have too much snacks, what are you going to do? You're going to go into the cup, you're going to try to eat all of them before they expire. So what happens is if you have too much saving challenges, at least for me, I feel like I need to get them done. I, I need to feel that sense of accomplishment. I need to feel like I've done something successful with my financial life. And so that's what this represents. But again, it's not, if it starts to stress you out, cut back. If something isn't working, change it. Remember we talked about in that video, the budget mistakes to avoid. You need to do your, you need to do your um, financial reviews. You need to do your budget reviews. Do, and we plan to do a budget review every three months. So at the end of March... I'll do my first review and I'll see, how do I feel? Is this working for me? Is this budget working for me? Is this binder with all these challenges working for me? Or is, is it overwhelming me? And I make changes then. Then we'll do our second review at the end of June. We'll do our third review at September. And then we'll do a final review and uh, make our final changes to go into the following year. And I think doing it this way, um, cutting it up into smaller pieces just makes it a little bit more easier. All right, so don't skip this step, guys. Try to get a pen and paper. Try to get this done before 2024 so you have a sense of direction. Now I have, a, I have my map. I have my budget. This is my map. This is my plan. Meet me back here in March where we'll see did this actually work and what changes we need to make. All right, guys. That's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. We're going to be going through our sinking funds. Now that we know what our budget is, we need to know how am I going to take this 7680 how am I going to put it to my sinking funds? Which sinking funds, which goals, which targets am I going to be able to meet with just working with this number? I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.